Welcome to this special interview on money control. We are aboard an inspection car with the Union Minister Ashwini Vaishnav ji, who handles three very crucial portfolios: uh, railways, um, IT, as well as telecom. And you're sitting here, sir, in the driver's seat <laughs> aboard an inspection car. It seems very fitting that we are interviewing you inside this uh, moving car. But thank you very much for talking to us, sir. Uh, you've had quite a hectic day in Bengaluru reviewing uh, various railway projects. Um, you know, there's clearly a lot of interest around Vande Bharat, but Vande Bharat, Vande Sadharan. What what are the plans going forward as far as the IT hub is concerned? Bengaluru requires a huge shift from road-based transportation to rail-based transportation. Every large city in the world, hmm. Tokyo, uh, Seoul. Take any large city, Osaka, New Delhi, all large cities basically manage their transportation by shifting a large part of the commute from road to rail-based transportation. So that's the first principle on which we are working. The entire railway network, which runs across the city, we have reviewed each and every section of it today. Had detailed sessions on this. How do we increase the capacity of each of these sections? Whether the section which comes from the airport into the center of the city, one which comes from Whitefield into the center of the city, one which we are traveling now from the center of the city all the way to Hosur, another one on the Mysore side, another one on Tumkur side. All the sections we have studied in full detail and increase the capacity. Our endeavor will be to increase the capacity of each one of them. And run modern, very modern Vande Metro trains on them. Vande Metro trains are being designed right now. The prototypes are getting manufactured. Very soon, those prototypes will also be out. So we will be planning to do that first. Second, the Bangalore suburban project, right. which is a very important project for Bangalore city. That's a joint venture project in which the state government holds 51% equity in the company K Ride. So we reviewed that project also today, and uh, the state government officials were also invited for the review. And whatever support the central government can give, will definitely we will provide. This is a very important project. Beyond politics, we should see, we should rise above politics and deliver to the people is what our mission is. As our prime minister says, "Sabka saath, sabka vikas." That's the way we will work on this. And third, very important. Is we have sanctioned seven crore rupees for preparing a DPR mm. for Ring Railway, basically about twenty to twenty-five kilometers outside the main city. If we can do a complete circular Ring Railway, so that becomes the kind of hub and hub and spoke model in which there will be seven arteries through which people can come in and go out at a very rapid pace at good volumes, good numbers. And uh, in a sense, most of the neighboring towns and cities of Bengaluru will be they will become integral part of Bengaluru once this ring railway concept works. In another seven eight to seven to ten months, we will complete the survey and DPR preparation work. Then we'll go for sanctions and other part. So in a sense, overall we looked at each and every uh, aspect of rail transportation in the city. Got it, sir. You've also spoken extensively today about India's prowess when it comes to manufacturing. How it's uh, you know emerged as a huge powerhouse when it comes to smartphone uh, manufacturing, mobile manufacturing. Um, so you know, as far as local needs are concerned, we we are almost completely self-sufficient. Nine nine point two percent of phones are made in India. So what is the government's goal as far as uh, exports are concerned over the next say one two three years? Would you have a target in mind? This is an industry, electronics manufacturing, mobile manufacturing. This is an industry where it's very important to create that critical mass. That threshold has to be crossed, and that threshold we have now crossed by crossing hundred billion dollars of production and of electronics and forty-four billion dollar production of mobile phones. We have crossed that threshold, and today we are in a position where we can move away from a. Import substitution model and move on to an export-led model. 
this is a very complex global value chain and some of the components which are required for manufacturing electronics and mobile phones they are very high precision components mm. and I'm very glad to share with you that uh, quite a large number of components have started getting manufactured in india because of the volume of the product final yeah. product the supply chain is getting more and more mature value in the value chain we are going higher again like step by step we are going up in the value chain and now we have to focus on making it an export led growth mm. and export led growth is very important because that will generate huge number of employment huge number of opportunities for uh, the entire supply chain ecosystem so that is our next focus another very important point to consider here is practically every aspect of electronics telecom equipment mobile phones hardware like uh, laptop servers pcs defense electronics power electronics pract- um, medical electronics practically every aspect of electronic uh, manufacturing and design that is now happening in india at a good scale at a very large uh, volume and that is what is very important for scaling up the next journey next right. um, in fact you've led me to my next question sir uh, will the vector of growth now be uh, exports or value addition locally because while we make you know 99.2% of phones are made in india there are still questions about you know value addition how are we scaling that up so if you can give us perspective on that it's a very important point and uh, there are some people who are trying to play politics on this without understanding the sector hmm. see the global value chain is such a complex phenomenon if you draw the global value chain of a mobile phone on a map hmm. you would be amazed it looks like a spider's web that's the complexity of the supply chain today every component will pass borders multiple times so what's very important is first first and foremost thing is to get the volume up that's what we have been able to achieve in the 99 and a half years today the volumes are very good so now our focus is first on increasing the value addition in the country second getting more and more design elements so that you get more for the value uh, of what we produce here third export led growth because our products are today well established on quality in terms of reliability and that uh that uh, prestige that reliability that confidence the world has uh, created on india's manufacturing capabilities that is what we will leverage in the next level right um tata and apple are both ramping up manufacturing here in fact there are reports that you know tata uh, electronics will double the amount of manufacturing that it does here so what are the plans in order to bring the entire iphone component ecosystem in india is that going to be the next big uh, push sir see most of the components in mobile phones they have variants hmm. but the fundamentals remain the same so all the i generally prefer never to take any names of any companies all the companies which are manufacturing mobile phones in india they have already started developing the component manufacturing as i said there are five six major component subsystems which are which are now exported so that's the growth which has already happened and we need to continuously push that growth and that phenomenon we should continuously encourage so that more and more of value addition happens in india more and more of exports happen out of india got it sir um you will also be at the amd facility in bengaluru tomorrow so i have to ask you about india's plans when it comes to procuring uh, compute and ai chips because we've seen countries like you know uae place orders uh, other countries place orders it's sort of become a geopolitical race for chips uh, how are we sir in terms of uh, you know compute capacity gpus listen um we have to look at the entire thing from multiple perspectives what we are doing tomorrow at amd campus is one of the largest semiconductor product design campuses is getting established in india in bangalore 
that gives a totally new dimension to chip design. Mm. Uh, we have about three hundred thousand. That's three lakh chip design engineers in India, and many of them are today designing some of the most complex chips in the world. So, with the success of our semiconductor program, many of them are now encouraged to start product design companies. Yes. So, more we get the full product design here, more we get the more we create the opportunities for further fab manufacturing processes in our country. So, our focus is on the entire value chain, design part, product full product design, fab, and OSET. The first. Uh, First factory that was uh, first OSAC unit that was approved during Honorable Prime Minister's visit to US in June. The approval happened. The, the uh, yeah with yeah. Micron, and uh, in in September the factory construction yes. started. So the whole world has got the entire world has got huge confidence on India's ability to execute and create a totally new industry. So our focus right now. Is to make sure that our entrepreneurs and startups, they are able to create value in terms of product design. Our large companies, they should move further up from services to product design. We get more and more proposals for fab, setting up more fabs, and we continue to focus on OSET as the segment. So this entire value chain, we are focused, and there is very good. Confidence in the world today, and good progress is possible. I'll just see final couple of questions. You chaired a very important meeting uh, last week on this entire deep fake issue, and you said a regulation will be coming. Subsequently, the government also has given a deadline to big tech firms that you know they need to take down these uh, content, or they will risk losing the safe harbor provisions. Um, is it? You know, easy to regulate this, or do you expect a separate set of regulations, or do you believe the existing IT rules will be sufficient to crack down uh, on such content? We are open to every possible solution because mm -hmm. this is a very big threat to democracy. Absolutely. This is a very big uh, threat to our social institutions, which has come up, and I am very glad that all the platforms have responded in a very mature and responsible way. They have, uh, they are fully willing to cooperate, and uh, we have uh, we have had two rounds of meetings with them. And next meeting we should have within the first week of December. By that time, what steps the platforms are willing to take on their own, mm -hmm. and from our side, whether we need a new regulation, new rules, or within the existing rules, what do we, uh, what is the right right uh, solution that we will. Discuss together and come up. Right. Last question, sir. Will this also determine the way you look at AI regulation going forward? Because the EU um, has now come up with norms. There is also a fear that you know, if you regulate an industry like this, it could end up stifling innovation. So, where does India stand in the way it will go about? See, we were very successful in creating a balance between innovation and regulation in our privacy bill, right? DPDP bill is a classic example where the entire world is. Uh, taking this as a template today, because we were able to uh, create a very good balance between innovation and regulation. We did not we did not keep any provision which stifles innovation. In case of AI, there are multiple threats. Mm -hmm. This is a significantly more complex thing compared to privacy regulation, because AI can actually be a major threat to humanity itself. It can be a today some of the Deep fakes, misinformation, which is created using AI, all these things can actually create huge disturbances in the society. Our social institutions, institutions like marriage, these are institutions which have been built over centuries. These institutions, if they are threatened by somebody creating a deep fake of somebody else and creating rift in the family, those kind of things are something which we need to worry about. Society has to take some action, and th that's where we'll have to work together, all of us, the platforms, the society, the regulators, the government. All of us will have to work together and find a solution. I think we should be able to find that solution. On that note, thank you very much, sir, for talking to us and for this special interview. Thank you, sir.